Morning everyone, my name is Vito and I work on search and voice at Pandora. And today I'll be talking about voice mode, which is the in-app voice experience that we launched this year. So a few words about Pandora. Early this year, we got acquired by SiriusXM, and together Pandora and SiriusXM account for more than 100 million active users a month. When users come to Pandora, they can enjoy music and spoken content in the form of podcasts, and we have also some unique content such as Pandora Stories. For example, here we have Gwen Stefani that talks about uh, some of our tracks. So we have mixed uh, music and uh, voice tracks in this playlist. And then we also have personalized radio stations, curated and personalized soundtracks, and much more. But today I will talk about voice mode. So here I'll be using Oscar Selmer, I, our VP of Science as example user. So Oscar says a Pandora, which is the wake word, which will trigger voice mode. So now voice mode is waiting for Oscar to say something more. And Oscar says, play party music. Now Pandora receives this uh, voice signal, the speech, uh, converts that to a transcription, and then we elaborate it and we come up with this party soundtrack, which is unique to Oscar. And there is also a text-to-speech component that tells Oscar what's, gonna, what's happening, what's the next action, which is now playing your part soundtrack. So thanks to the fact that we have the wake word activation in the text-to-speech, the experience is, is designed to be hands-free, so Oscar doesn't have to touch the, the screen. So to solve for this problem, we use both search and, and recommendation technologies and techniques, and we classify queries in three main categories. The first one is the non-item query, where the intent is pretty specific. The user is looking for, a, for an entity, for example, play Drake. And I'll explain how we use search techniques to satisfy those queries, and how we can use personalization to improve the search experience. Second category are the thematic queries. It's very common in voice for users to ask for music regarding an activity, a context, a mood. For example, play some workout music. And this is in between search recommendation, and we use both techniques to solve for this problem. Third one are the open-ended queries. These are convenient queries. Many times users don't, don't want to go through the effort of thinking about what to ask for and rely on Pandora to come up with the best music for that moment. So examples are just play something awesome, play music that I like, just play some music. And this is pretty much a recommendation problem because there is no user query and we use personalization techniques to recommend any type of music for that user in that context. So let's start with the non-item queries. Here an example, play Drake. Here the, the intent is very clear. The user is looking for the artist Drake. Some other examples, for example, play latest Ed Sheeran single, play my feelings, or also a lyrics mention. Play the song that goes by, I got horses on my back. So this may seem a simple problem to solve. It's a search problem and the query is fully, is fully complete. However, there are many challenges that we face. For example, there are ASR errors. So ASR is the automated speech recognition system that converts speech to text. And even though ASR systems have made lots of progress in the past 10 years, such as we can use uh, voice interfaces today, sometimes they still make mistakes. Sometimes users, they don't specify the full name of an entity, probably because they don't remember it, or they use the part of the lyrics for asking for a track. So sometimes there is some noise in the user query. And also, we have tens of millions of entities in our catalog, and there are lots of ambiguities. There are either cases where the different entities have the same name, or they sound alike, which is a problem new to voice now. So let's look at some ASR errors. So this is Senorita, quite a popular track by Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello, and it's a Spanish word. And so these are some extreme examples, but this is reality. This is, a, this is some of the transcriptions that we get, which is quite different from the title, right? Senorita sang Erika, send your data. Yeah, it's tough. 
another example, lyrics. Um, so this is a quite unique type of lyrics, and actually I like this song, some users ask for it. And um, so lyrics search is already hard on its own, but when you, when you add to it the ASR noise, it beca becomes even harder. And then also problems that are unique to voice search, for example, homophone uh, music entities. In this case, the user is looking for this artist, John Maus, M-A-U-S, but the ASR made this honest mi mistake. Instead of M-A-U-S, he thought the user asked for John M-O-U-S-C. Why this? Because uh, M-O-U-S-C is a much more common word in the English vocabulary. So now we send this query to voice search, and voice search returns these two results, which are both relevant for this query. The first one is a literal match with the transcription, which is noisy. The second one is a phonetic match, and is the result that the user actually asked for. But voice search doesn't know that, right? So in the design of this system, we had to encounter uh, these issues, and we have to design it to support phonetic search. So now we have these two results, they are both relevant, and what we do is we use personalization to try to make our best guess and hopefully pick the right result. So we look at the user profile and then we basically compare the user profile with the artist embedding in a latent space and pick the one which is closest, closest to the user profile. So basically we cast the search problem into a personalized entity search system. So the first phase is the retrieval. Here we want to be very robust, we want to maximize recall. We want to find all the possible candidates that are related to the user query. And we use phonetic and fuzzy matching techniques. We also look at query formulation, which is used a lot in text search. So if the user makes the first attempt and is not su successful, and then makes a following attempt, which results in a play action, if the two queries are similar, we can infer an association between the original query and the final result. So next time the user asks again for the original query, we can play the result directly. Or we can at least learn from it. Then we have also a list of aliases, for example, the artist that Mao, you will pronounce it also that mouse. And so we scrape those aliases either from the web or some of them are generated manually. So as I said, the first phase is about maximizing recall. And since we only play one result, the second phase is ranking, where we refine that list and we come up with the best result for each user. And this is where we apply personalization. So this is a machine learning ranking model where we use query result features, for example, based on the phonetic and fuzzy match between the query and the result, and also personalized features. For example, we can look at historical interactions between the user and the item. This is more an exploit signal. Or we can also generalize to artists or entities the user never interacted with directly in the past. And this is where we use recommended systems, and we have affinity scores, such as we can generalize. And here we maximize for precision at one, because we only play one result. So since we know that machine learning systems can make mistakes, and this is a user-facing product, we design the, the UX to account for these possible mistakes. So if we know that the confidence of the result is not very strong, it is not very high, instead of playing the result directly, we can ask the user for a confirmation, right? So if we have some context about the relation between the user and the result, for example, if we know that the user has a station with that artist, we could use this explanation into the request. For example, do you want me to play your John Mouse radio? And then based on the user response, we can decide if we want to play the artist or not, and we can collect better feedback data to improve the system. Second category of queries are the thematic queries. These are those queries that users ask for when they are doing an activity, they are feeling a certain way. And those are semi-ambiguous queries because in many cases, there are lots of literal matches in the catalog with those uh, themes. For example, play me road trip music. First thing we need to do is to disambiguate the user intent. Is the user looking for the soundtrack to the movie Road Trip, or is he looking for music for the driving activity? 
If we figure out that the user is looking for the driving acti activity, then we need to perform a semantic search. So we don't want only to return literal matches to road trip or to driving, but we want to find semantic matches. So let's look at how we solve this. The first, the first phase is the query tagging. Here we try to get a, a structured representation of the user query. And I'll show more in detail in, in a minute what I mean by that. So we get this structure representation of the query. So we basically get slots, and we pass it to the search engine, where we perform a tag-based search. So here we are sharing the taxonomy between the slots filling model and the tag-based search, so that, such that we can just pass those tags to the search engine and uh, make a retrieval. And here again, we try to maximize recall, so we get a handful of results. If you think about driving music, we may get back hundreds of results. The second phase is where we use a recommender to rank those results and come up with personalized recommendations for each user. Because for driving music, we have country, country stations, hip-hop, electronic, and so on. So different users are going to enjoy different types of music. So we want to personalize the experience rather than just recommending the most popular station. And here is where we use personalized techniques. So we look at user item affinity, where we use uh, embeddings. So we'll compute the, the cosine distance between the user embedding and the item embedding. For tracks and album, we default to the artist embedding. And we also look at query relevance, uh, query result relevance. For example, in the retrieval phase, we try to maximize recall. So in some cases, there may be some results which are not a good fit for that co query context. And in the final ranking, we try to balance between query specificity and uh, personalization. So now let's look a little bit more into the query tagging phase. So this is about, oh no, sorry, before that, another important component is the state tracker. So we only recommend one item at a time. If, if the user makes a request, we may recommend something, which is probably not the best recommendation. So if, it, if the user doesn't like that, may ask again for the same thing. In that case, we don't want to play again the same result. So we need to keep track of the user context, user history, and user state, so we can apply some diversification to the results. So now let's look at the query tagging. So this is where we perform natural language understanding. So the first thing we do is the intent recognition. So I didn't really mention that besides playing music, we also support other commands, for example, media control commands. You can say, play, pause, uh, add this song to my playlist, tell me more about this song. So this is an example about a play music intent. And the query is, play some romantic dinner music. And the goal of the query tagging is to extract the signal out of the query that we can use for performing a semantic search. So here the query tagger and the slots filling will tag romantic as character and dinner as context. And these are two tags that are in the taxonomy that we defined for boys. So let's look at how we do this. We use a deep learning model. So we have the input query, which is a sequence of word. For each word, we have the word embedding and some uh, character-based representation based on a CNN. And this is the input to a bidirectional LSTM model. And then the final layer, the output layer, is the conditional random field. And each output here is based on the beginning, inside, or outside uh, tagging scheme. So the first word play is tagged as outside, outside of the scheme, then classics is tagged as object, and B stands for beginning. So this is the first word of the object, and it's the only one because the second one, by is tagged as outside. And then we have Arita Franklin. So Arita is tagged as beginning artist, and Franklin as inside artist. And this tells us that Arita Franklin is part of the same uh, word, basically. So last category of queries are the broad queries. These are open-ended queries where the user asks just Pandora to play some music and relies on the service to come up with the best music for that moment. Play something awesome, play something new, just play music. 
And this is a pure recommendation problem because we don't have the user query. So we could have built a new recommender from scratch that would score the whole catalog and all the podcasts. But instead of doing that, we decided to reuse existing recommenders. So at Pandora, over the years, we have built many specialized recommenders. For example, the new music recommender recommends new album releases in browse. The station recommender recommends stations to, to listen to in browse as well. And user playlists will recommend uh, the best playlist um, to the user. So instead of building a new recommender, we decide to use those recommenders. So each recommender contains specialized recommendations. And we built a multi-armed bandit on top of those. So each recommender now is an army, is an arm of the bandit. At a query time, we pull all this arm and we pick the best the best arm. We use Thompson sampling, so we'll pick the arm with the highest possible uh, probability. Right now, we are using the simple Beta Bernoulli Bandit. So basically, uh, the Bandit is, is based on uh, successes and fails. And uh, we use a, a beta distribution, so we'll just sample from the beta distribution. So each arm will have its own beta distribution. We'll sample from it, and then we'll pick the, the arm with the highest probability. So once we pick the best arm, and this may change at any given time, let's say that we pick station, the station recommender arm. So now we'll pick one recommendation from that recommender, for example, Tamprint Radio. Then we'll start playing Tamprint Radio for that user, and we'll observe user behavior. So we'll use playtime to compute the reward. So if the playtime is above a certain threshold, then we'll consider that a success, otherwise a failure. And right now, we are using this simple signal just because the beta Bernoulli, it's based on uh, counts. So it's the simple set setting we're using right now. But we are also testing uh, more complex con contextual bandits, such as we can also consider the user context into the bandit. So some final considerations. Uh, it's very important, uh, the evaluation step. As, as I've shown, we have many different problems within the same product feature. So we have entity search, we have personalized recommendations, we have content tagging. So each, each problem has its own evaluation metrics and uh, evaluation settings. And then also, uh, this task is very different from a standard recommender systems because when you have a UI, you have multiple items that you can recommend in a ranked list of options. In this case, we only play one item at a time. So we can only recommend one item, and we don't have user clicks. So we have to infer successes from uh, user behavior. And we use playtime, mainly. But we also look at query trials, and uh, we perform session modeling. And also, since we recommend only one item at a time, we have a strong selection bias because we don't get to expose that many items to the user. So that means that we have to ac account for exploration policies, so we can keep learning. So instead of always recommending the best item to the user, so instead of always using a greedy strategy, we use exploration strategies sometimes. So we can collect new data. Just want to acknowledge the work of the team, so we have a diverse uh, team. We have people with a uh, background, background in uh, computational linguistics and NLP, people with a uh, search background, and uh, also folks with a recommendation systems background. And I don't know if I have time now for questions, but uh, reach out to me offline and I'll be happy to, uh, to, ask, uh, to answer, answer any questions.